So I'm going to talk about CJ mimics, which is really important in terms of like identifying these and like uh, rightly diagnose in timely manner to avoid like you know other uh, misleading treatment, unnecessary treatment. I have no financial or any kind of disclosure for this talk. So objectives will be to discuss various paroxysmal non-epileptic events in infants and children. So I have categorized these uh, paroxysmal events uh, in four categ categories. Uh, one is uh, generalized paroxysms and drop attacks, another jerks and abnormal postures, oculomotor abnormalities, and sleep-related non-epileptic events. So in the category of generalized paroxysm and drop attacks, uh, I divided into like different age group. So in neonates, uh, there's like apnea, jitteriness, and that will be uh, talked by uh, in another talk uh, with like neonatal uh, seizures. And I'm, I'm gonna focus on few uh, non-epileptic non events related uh, in infants and older children and adolescents. So first on the list, like reflex anoxic seizures are called asystolic syncope. It usually begins in infancy and remits in preschool age can develop into a vesovagal syncope like symptoms and they have a specific trigger, usually painful stimulus. And usually it activates the autonomic nervous system to induce either hypotension or asystole or bradycardia or both. And sometimes it is confusing with the like it appears like a, a tonic tonic seizure or like you know tonic clonic seizure sometimes at the end of this uh, towards the end of this whole episode because of sometimes they can have due to uh, hypoxia, they can have dyslipidity rigidity, which mimics like that. Usually very, very uh, brief duration and have like fast recovery time. They can sometimes progress to convulsive seizures, which appear like that, like, you know, and so it called like a syncopal convulsions at that time. Um, and it has like very different treatment. So it is essentially uh, very, very uh, important to diagnose rightly uh, to treat the, this condition uh, and adequately uh, diagnose it. The another non-epileptic event, which is very, very common are breath holding attacks or episodes. There are two types of breath holding attacks, which is like one is less common, which is pallet type or white tap type. And usually they have like, they are cardiac in origin. The common triggers are usually painful stimuli. They have weak crying, pallor, loss of consciousness often, and loss of muscle tone. And they can have sometimes opisthotonus jerks. Usually last more than one minute. And the starting age is around one to two years and usually results for four to six years. The most common are cyanotic type uh, or called blue type, which has which is associated with prolonged expiratory apnea and have a respiratory mechanism of these type of events. The common triggers are like anger, frustration, uh, and they usually have duration less than a minute and episodes go like the baby will cry, they'll have prolonged expiratory apnea kind of, and that leads to cyanosis. They can also have like syncope or tonic posture at the end of the event. And their usual uh, starting age is around six months to 18 months of age. And these episodes also usually resolves by four to six years. They have been uh, shown multifactorial etiology and sometimes iron deficiency have been uh, reported in most cases. So this is one of those video I could able to. Hello. 
You can appreciate the breathing got like held in expiration during trying and now he becomes cyanotic and there is like a little tonic extension of both arms. So that's how typical uh, cyanotic breath holding episodes looks like. Then another common common events are benign paroxysmal vertigo, which is like very common migraine equivalent. And kids, they do have like episodes of deep imbalance during which they are fear frightened. They can have nystagmus, diaphoresis, nausea, or vomiting. And these episodes usually remit by five years of age. Then another most common differential in terms of uh, these uh, non-epileptic event versus seizure are the syncope. And it usually sometimes get like most oftenly gets misdiagnosed as an epileptic seizure. Because there are different types of syncope, vasovagal, orthostatic, situational, or any uh, specific cardiac uh, arrhythmias related to channelopathy like long QT syndrome and others. They usually present with the loss of consciousness in the beginning and that can lead to like postural tone or sometimes a uh, syncopal convulsion at the end of the event. Usual, uh, this table illustrates a uh, difference between typical syncope versus epileptic seizures. So onset is variable, ending is also variable for both, but uh, syncope have like uh, very specific trigger factors, sometimes prolonged standing, hunger, heat, pain, mutilation, cough, or other situational uh, triggers. For epileptic seizures, usual triggers are sleep deprivation, drug alcohol withdrawal, and like light sensitive with botic stimulation kind. Semiology of syncope, usually they have like flaccid, they'll vary with or without myoclonus. They can have opisthotonus and they're very brief, sometimes like lasting a few seconds with immediate return to baseline. There is no postictal, drowsiness, confusion, and those stuff. And they also, they can have like some visual or auditory uh, prodrome uh, with the syncope and other autonomic symptoms related to bus vagal syncope and others. They usually do not have automatism, uh, which in epileptic seizures, specifically the temporal or focal seizures, they may have the oral or, oral or other motor complex automatism. Another common variant is familial hemiplegic migraine, which, uh, which are related to certain channelopathy, usually attacks within five to seven years of age. They can have mm, some motor aura of weakness associated with the uh, typical migraine uh, symptoms. They are usually associated, precipitated by head trauma, exertion, or emotional stress. Then another big uh, proportion of the patients who have psychogenic non-epileptic seizure, approximately one in five patients presenting to the physician uh, with seizure-like events have been reported to have uh, psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. And these events have specific motor features or they can have discognitive features sometimes. And their typical identifying features are usually their predominance proximal or truncal movement. Their movements are kind of waxing and waving pattern. They are arrhythmic and usually have like a start and stop phenomenon you call like, you know, intermittently it will go on longer duration than like actual epileptic seizures. And they, the video easy and capturing the event is the gold standard of diagnosis and a prompt diagnosis of these are really essential given the potential side effect of anti-seizure medications 
and potential sometimes they may have invasive procedures uh, for treating as a seizures, as intubation, and they can also just delay the appropriate psychological treatment, which is necessary to treat these conditions rather than anti-epileptic drugs. These are a few features uh, by which like we can differentiate the psychogenic seizures from the epileptic seizure. The onset of the psychogenic seizure is usually gradual. Uh, they are often prolonged in several minutes. They have rarely injury, kind of any head trauma or tongue biting due to fall. And most common uh, features is ictal eye closure. They sometimes resist passive eyelid opening. There is no, rarely they have like incontinence and motor activity, forward pelvic thrusting, rolling side to side, like changing uh, movements. Uh, frequently in different dimension, like, and they have waxing and waning arrhythmic pattern of uh, these movements. They rarely have post confusion. The usual triggers are emotional disturbance, and they sometimes can be reproduced by suggesting the or like imposing the same trigger if they correlate with something. And usually the ictal EEG uh, remains normal during those events. The second category of these non-epileptic events are jerks and abnormal postures. So the neonatal uh, paroxysmal events will be talked in different talk. Uh, so I'm gonna go over the most common uh, non-epileptic events like sandifer, benign myoclonus of early infancy, benign paroxysmal torticollis, and ticks, and some paroxysmal dyskinesia. So this is the video you can appreciate in the beginning. There is these frequent eye closure, it's like spasm, spasmodic tonic kind of eye closure. So this is motor takes, he continues to talk to mom uh, during these moments, there is nothing else. And these, Paroxysmal motor movements are very common in children. Usually they are sudden, rapid, repetitive movements or sometimes sounds, which is a vocal tics. They are usually preceded by a feeling of urgency, discomfort, and a compulsion to perform the tics, that same kind of repetitive movement. Usually these are exacerbated by emotions, typically wax and vein. There is often family history of uh, uh, obsessive compulsive uh, disease or other uh, psychomorbidities. They have been classified in simple and com complex. Uh, simple is like it, if in, it involves single muscle group like eye blinking or head twitching, shoulder twitching. And complex, sometimes they have complex motor movements involving two or more muscle group. These conditions sometimes gets misdiagnosed as myoclonic seizures. But these are a few uh, differentiating points of myoclonic seizure. Often they are triggered by sleep depression, fatigue, and ticks can be suppressed, but not myoclonic seizures. And myoclonic seizures usually do not occur in the same body part all the time. They may involve different body part or different muscle group. Then another category is paroxysmal dyskinesia. So these are a rare hyperkinetic group of disorders, mainly uh, involving abnormal involuntary movements and episodic onset, usually uh, manifesting as dystonia, athetosis, chorea, chorioathetosis, bellism. And in this category, there are two main paroxysmal kinesigenic dyskinesia and non-canopy and KD non-kinesigenic dys dyskinesia. 
and benign paroxysmal torticollis, paroxysmal dystonic cord, these are other kind of paroxysmal dyskinesia. Paroxysmal dystonic radial cardioarthrosis is uh, usually seen in neonate uh, that can start at birth attacks, usually involve face and extremities lost between two minutes and six hours long. And it may lead to dysarthria or dysphagia. And this is usually inherited in autosomal dominant. Paroxysmal PKD is another similar type of uh, non-epileptic paroxysmal movement disorder, which are also genetic and they usually uh, related to mutation of PRRT gene mutation. And they can have like sudden normal movements involving whole body, uh, uh, including standing up and step, stepping out of, these are like a specific, uh, when they try to do like some normal movement, they start having these uh, choreoathetoid uh, abnormal involuntary movements. They, these patients can sometimes report aura-like sensation preceding the abnormal movement, described as some rushing sensation throughout the body or sensation of some stiffness or numbness. Usually they are brief and response uh, dramatically to low-dose carbon dipping in these conditions. The, not, this is the similar thing, but it's non canosogenic, so it can occur without any normal movement. They usually last for a few minutes or uh, to several hours. And the typical, they are not typically triggered by sudden movements, but emotional stress, alcohol, coffee, these are the usual trigger factor. And they are associated PNKD gene mutation in 60% of cases. This is the video. So, yeah, just look at these movements where he like suddenly have retrocolis type of neck movement. So this is benign paroxysmal torticollis of infancy. These are typically presents as morning episodes of just painless retrocolis, sometimes lateralcolis, like lateral neck movement, uh, torticollis, often triggered by changes in postures. These attacks may begin with abnormal ocular movements and progress to uh, stiffness in the abnormal posture and uh, can last for minutes, hours, or sometimes uh, days. It occurs in clusters. There are autonomic symptoms such as pallor or vomiting may be associated. Oftentimes, girls are affected more than boys with this condition, and they usually begin before three months of age and spontaneously remits before age of five. They are rarely associated with the CACNA and calcium channelopathy gene mutation and usually medical therapy is not, uh, not needed. This is another similar non-epileptic events. Just look at his walking and imbalance. He gets imbalanced very briefly, but he gets like, he continues to walk afterwards. So these are called, Episodic ataxia, which is another type of uh, paroxysmal non epileptic movement disorder. Then, this very common condition called Sandifer syndrome. This is usually the kid may have extensive uh, extension or obstetrophonous posture. look at this and then says back. So
So these are usually associated with GRD. One uh, percent children of GRD usually starts in childhood or early childhood. Sudden onset of transient one to three minutes spasmodic torsional dystonia, uh, arching of the back or opisthotonus position in patients with GRD. And these, its occurrence during or after feeding are key features that distinguish this from the epileptic seizures. Early treatment of GR may result in resolution of these kind of symptoms. Oftentimes, we'll get like you know, these as a concern of seizure-like activity, and it's important to diagnose correctly. This is another video where this. Look at this head drop. It it is very confusing with like real atonic seizures or where the. But they they are like you know non epileptic. These are non epileptic head drops. Usually happens in setting of like otherwise normal healthy kid with normal development, and it usually can start somewhere. Uh, around three to six months and usually results by a year or year of age. And they are very, very, very uh, similar looking to atonic seizures. And these involuntary move, they can have like several times per day occur in cluster at times. And sometimes it happens so, so much in cluster that it often results in the head bobbing or like uh, decreased neck tone. And the easy, the essential uh, to diagnose these as like non-epileptic head drops, but it can be sometimes confusing with like these uh, related neck drop or EG, uh, EMG artifact might be sometimes confusing. Then third category of these non-epileptic events are oculomotor abnormalities. Uh, the most common is like paroxysmal tonic of word gaze, which is important to uh, recognize because that's oftentimes the family complaints of these type of movement as concern of seizures. Mm, the another type of uh, the similar oculomotor Moment is uh, so the video of the tonic of word gaze. So look at this kid, this video. It's just like in the beginning of this video, It'll like open eyes wide and look up suddenly. The another type of uh, oculomotor non-epileptic events is Spasmus Newton's, which has a triad of asymmetric quandular nystagmus, head nodding or head tilt, and torticollis. They usually have onset between four to 12 months of age and usually results spontaneously. But they these kind of triad, they require neuroimaging to exclude other structural brain, brain abnormality, especially like postural fossa, uh, abnormality, optic nerve, hypoplasia, any diencephalic syndrome, or any tumor. Okay. And then similar is oculometer apraxia, which has saccadic eye movement impairment. Then fourth category of non-epileptic events are sleep disorders in which benign neonatal sleep myoclonus, sleep transition disorders, some partial arousal disorders, and other REM sleep, sleep disorders like sleep paralysis, nightmares, they can also be very confusing with the real epileptic, uh, especially frontal lobe seizures. Benign neo neonatal sleep myoclonus, is usually repetitive bilateral rhythmic jerking involving upper and lower extremities during non-REM sleep, sometimes mimics clonic seizures. A slow one hertz rocking of infant, usually in head to toe direction, is specific that reproduces the myoclonus. 
and the lack of any autonomic manifestations is uh, helpful in characterizing these as non-epileptic. It usually uh, gets better by a couple of months, like two, three months of age. Then brief nocturnal arousals is very, very, very much mimicking to the frontal lobe epilepsies. And they can occur one to two hours usually after the onset of the sleep, usually in stage four, and these are normal. Such episode can vary from chewing, sitting up, mumbling to agitated sleepwalking, and usually last for 10 to 15 minutes. However, nocturnal frontal lobe epilepsy, these last less, uh, of they are of less duration and very brief, like maybe maximum one to two minutes. And they can occur in cluster. They have like very similar stereotypic, same sequence of events ev with every single seizures. And differentiating from these as uh, from the Rolandic epilepsy can be sometimes challenging. And usually epileptic seizures are briefer than these uh, nocturnal arousal or confusional arousal. Usually home video recording is useful in diagnosing these conditions. And they are usually managed by reassurance, establishing stable sleep habits. And capturing these events in EMU is a gold standard to characterize these as non-epileptic. Then comes uh, sleep, some sleep transition disorders like nocturnal head banging, rolling, and body rocking, usually occurring in infants and toddlers as if they are trying to fall asleep. This is one of the soothing mechanism and also called like Chakasio Capitis uh, Capitis Nocturna. It's like a very high fi term. Uh, but this is very common thing to uh, for which like the patient will come to. Uh, seek any opinion like you know with the concern of seizure and these usually more often in children with learning disability or developmental delay delay they usually remit spontaneously by five years of age other is uh, narcolepsy cat cataplexy syndrome narcolepsy usually they have excessive daytime sleepiness and they have cataplexy is a sudden loss of tone they can even fall and they appear as like uh, some seizures. They can have sleep paralysis, some hypnagogic hallucinations. So taking the history basically uh, about the sleep is always, always essential uh, in any patients uh, with like epilepsy or seizure-like even. And these loss of tone occurs in response to at times strong emotions and spread from face downwards. Consciousness usually is maintained in such cases. And they are related to these uh, specific HLA uh, gene, HLA uh, DQB10602, as uh, predisposing in 85 to 95% of cases. So, take home points uh, these uh, paroxysmal non epileptic events uh, are frequent in pediatric population and uh, often get misdiagnosed. Homemade video or true cell in making diagnosis in addition to careful history taking. Awareness is important for making accurate diagnosis and avoid unnecessary invasive procedures and its related complications. And use of diagnostic tool EEG must be guided by specific clinical suspicion because it can be sometimes misleading. These are a few. Uh, very good resource resource website uh, from the epilepsy.com. Uh, so model of this talk is not all that sex is seizure. Thank you for your attention.